here again. We are going to be doing 10.4 factoring trinomials. Very important lesson. All right, you're going to do this for a long time, so let's go and check it out. All right, so let's do a quick review before we get into it. When we multiply two binomials, we do we double distribute. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. 3 times 3x is 9x, and then 3 times 2 is 6. All right, and then when we get that, we get 6x squared plus 13x plus 6. So when we go this way, it is multiplying. When we go backwards, it is actually called factoring. All right, so we're going to learn how to take a quadratic, a polynomial here, and go backwards and factor it into a binomial times a binomial. All right, we're gonna be factoring with something called the Australian method. And before we get too deep into it, you need to understand a few things. First of all, you need to have it in standard form. So you have to have your highest exponent, your next highest exponent, and then your least highest exponent. And in these, we're always gonna have an x squared, an x, and a c, all right? So we're going to have to first multiply our a and our c together. So when we multiply a times c, we're gonna put that number here, and then our b is gonna be by itself. So in this case, six times six, a times c is 36, all right? And then we have to add up to 13. All right, when we do that, we're going to have some things to work out. So the first of all, we need to find what two numbers multiply to 36 and add to 13. So I'm gonna show you a couple ways to do this now. As you do this, you're gonna get better at this, and you're gonna know factors that add up to things and whatnot. If you're not sure of what two numbers multiply to 36 and add up to 13, the best way to do it is to just write those numbers on the side. One times 36 is 36, and it adds to 37. Two times 18 is 36, and it adds to 20. Three times 12 is 36, and it adds up to 15. 4, 4 times 9 is 36 and it adds up to 13. 5 doesn't go in evenly. 6 times 6 and it adds to 12. And again, we want the one that adds up to 13, so we're looking at this number right here. All right? So, here we go, the Australian method of factoring. We know that we're going to have something that looks like a binomial times a binomial. All right, so let's start with that. So we know in the end, we're gonna to have to multiply some x times some x to get here. So I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna put this in the front of both of my binomials. 6x times 6x. Now I know that's wrong. I know x times x is x squared, great. But six times six is 36, not six. We have an extra factor of six. So if I wanna get rid of an extra factor of six, I'm gonna to have to divide by six. And that's okay, I have an extra factor of it. I can divide it, it'll cancel out. So my two numbers were 4 and 9. Now it doesn't matter if I put the 4 here or the 9 here because 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. It doesn't matter which way you multiply. All right, so let's go down here. Now I'm going to look in here. Do I have any common factors? Yeah, between 6 and 4, I can take out a factor of 2. So now 6x divided by 2, that's going to be 3x. 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. Do I have a common factor between 6x and 9? I do, so I'm going to take it out. Factor of 3, so that's 2x plus 3. All right, now here's a great reason I love the Australian method. My extra factors, 2 times 3, that equals 6. 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. The reason it's great is because I know if I took out the right amount of factors, they should cancel. And then what's left? 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. Now, that is factored. In other words, in other words if I multiply that together, I would get 6x squared plus 13x plus 6. We tell you you should probably do this quick check. The quickest check, the one I probably do the most, is I do a quick check. First times first, 3x times 2x. That's 6x squared, good. And then I do last times last. Two times three is six, good. Now what you should really do, really, you should also do these. Inners, two times two is four. 
3 times 3 is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13, and that works as well. All right, but we want a quick check for sure. All right, let's try this one out. So we know, now this is a, a is 1 if it's not written, right? So a times c, what two numbers multiply to 45, and at the same time add up to negative 14. All right, what two numbers add up to 45, or multiply to 45 and add to negative 14? And I'm going to show you a new way to do this using a calculator. So here's what we do. We, we, know, we know we want to multiply to 45 and add to negative 14. I come over here and I put in my x, all right, or excuse me, I put in the number I want to do multiply, so 45. I'm going to put in 45 and then I'm going to divide by x. And then I'm going to do table. I'm going to do second table. And what this is, is this is every number that multiplies to 45. 1 times 45. Well, that's 46. See, this is just giving me that table values that I just made myself. Now I'm doing it with a calculator. So that's 46. You can see decimals don't work out. 3 and 15, that's 18. 5 and 9. 5 and 9 is 14. We want negative 14. Negative 5 times negative 9. A negative times a negative is a positive. And negative 5 plus negative 9 is equal to negative 14. So, looks like we have our numbers. So we got to go over here. We're going to put our factors in. All right, so I'm putting 1v in front of both because v times v is v squared. Or, ooh, 1. I have a factor of 1. Now, we'll get to more of this in a second. But So what are my numbers? So I could have minus 9 or minus 5. All right, so is there any common factor here? No, I mean, I can always take a common factor of one out. I can always take a common factor of one out. One times one is one, so check this out. These ones cancel, don't they? And what we're left with is V minus nine times V minus five. It's almost as if that when I have this one in front, I don't need to actually have that canceled out, do I? I don't need to write it because I don't have an extra factor there, really. So let's do a quick check. V times V is V squared. Negative 9 times negative 5 is positive 45. And that looks like it works to me. All right. Let's try another one. All right. Hey, we got to thank those Aussies because apparently Australians came up with Wi-Fi, which most of us use on a daily basis. All right. So good looking out, Aussies. So here we go. Two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. So we're going to start with my 3h. And now here I wrote down 3h again. So I know I have an extra factor of 3, so I need to divide by 3. So what are two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2? Again, you're going to get good at this, but you may need to list them out. 2 doesn't go in. 3, right? Those are all the factors. Negative 3 times 5 is positive, uh, plus 5 is positive 2. So if I change these signs, I'll do that. So it's going to be positive 3 minus 5. And again, it doesn't matter where they go. When I look here, I have a common factor of 3, so I'm going to take it out. H plus 1. And those threes cancel, so what are we left with? h plus 1 times 3h minus 5. Of course, we should do a quick check. h times 3h is 3h squared. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. 3h plus negative 5h is negative 2h. So that does do a good job, and it checks out. Let's check this one out. Ooh, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Supposed to be beautiful, lots of exotic animals. All right, so 1 times negative 12, a times c is negative 12, and then we have to add up to positive 1. All right, so let's see here um, 1 times negative 12, that's negative 11, 2 times negative 6 is negative 4, 3 times negative 4 is negative 1. We want positive 1, so maybe negative 3 and positive 4. So why? and y. Again, now, I know that I have a, a factor of 1 over itself. Oh, but look here. If I divide by 1, do I really need to do that? 
No, because divided by 1 really doesn't change anything. There's not going to be any factors out to cancel out here. So, now, if you get good at this, you know, more power to you. If you need to write this over 1 every time, go ahead, write it every time. But sooner or later, you want to get in the habit of just see when you see that it's a factor of 1, you don't, you just do this quickly, all right? So negative 3 and positive 4. Let's do a quick check. Y times Y is Y squared. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. So we have our two factors. All right. So why don't you pause the video right now and try these on your own. All right, let's see how we do here. First times last, so I need two numbers that multiply to 45 and add to negative 18. All right, so I'm going to start with 5D in the front of both. And I know that I have an extra factor of 5, so I'm going to divide by 5. So two numbers that multiply by 45 and add to negative 18. Well, I know that is negative 3 and negative 15. Negative 3 times negative 15 is positive 45. Negative 3 plus negative 15 is negative 18. First one, there's nothing to cancel out. Second one, I have a 5 in both, so I'm going to take a 5 out. So 5D divided by 5 is D. Negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. And looky here, we know we're on the right track. They cancel it out. So this is 5D minus 3 times D minus 3. Let's do a quick check. 5D times D is 5D squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3D, negative 15D adds up to negative 18. Great. Let's try this one. So we have a factor of 1. So we're going to do that shortcut. We're not going to divide by 1, right? So two numbers that multiply to 36 and add to 12. Start with P in both places. P times P is P squared, so I don't need to write that divide by 1. You can if you want, though, all right? What are two numbers that multiply to 36 and add to 12? 6. P plus 6 times P plus 6, and this is the same thing twice, right? Anytime we have the same number or factor multiplied by the same factor, we can, we don't have to, but we can write it like that. Let's do a quick check. P times P is P squared. 6 times 6 is 36. All right, so there you have it. All right, before I let you go, there's going to be a, a little video here. Guy, they're asking him, I believe it's the British version of Big Brother. They're asking him to locate places in the world. One of the places he does a terrible job of locating is in actually Australia. Hard to believe, but you know, there are people out there that don't know where places are. So. Good luck on the mash check, and I will see you on the flip side. Big Brother would like to test your Essex geography. Ah, oh, you're killing me. I ain't got a clue. What's this, the world, or is this Essex, or...? Kirk, in this task, you must place four out of six correctly. Ah, oh, I've failed, man. I'm sorry. Oh. This should be easy for a Brentwood boy like you. Simply stick the purple pin in the map to mark Essex. That's right. <laughs> I can pinpoint an exit because uh, the UK is pretty small there. <laughs> I think we're on the inside of that cove there. Stick the blue pin in the map to mark America. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, oh, come on, babe. I don't know where America is, man. You're kidding me. I wouldn't know where America was. I wouldn't, know. I wouldn't I have a clue. Know. Where is it? It's, it's there. Uh, the blue pen. Is that oh, down the bottom left hand corner? Down. Down. I should have to put it here, wouldn't I? No! no. I'll have to say sorry to them. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk, you must know Grange Hill. Yeah. It's also in Jamaica. Man, I don't know. I just have to put it here. I ain't got a clue. I don't know anywhere. I've never looked at a map. Oh. Oh. Stick the pink pin in the map to mark Australia. Oh, you gotta get that. Yeah. He is not that dull, he knows what that is. He's trying to think. We had a <laughs> 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 Oh, no. 
I'll put it down there because I think if the rose around, I don't know. Stick the green pin in the map to mark South Africa. South Africa is uh, uh, mate, I'm just gonna hit and hope, man. Just hit and hope. I ain't got a clue, I ain't even thinking. Stick the red pin in the map to mark Canada. Over here, like right at the back corner. <laughs> Let's see how you did. I don't know here. Will you remove the cover from the other board? This is gonna make me look so stupid. <laughs>